of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the name of Jesus and by the authority of the Word of God I speak to the sickness and I command it to go right now if it's arthritis say I command this arthritis to depart now someone says I don't believe in commanding God that's not commanding God that's commanding the arthritis that's commanding the sickness Jesus said say to the mountain speak to the mountain don't beg God to do something command it to be done don't command God command the situation command the mountain and there's power in the spoken word so when you pray and if you pray in the right attitude if you pray in faith believing the action will take place even at that time praise be the name of the Lord God becomes partners with us don't just cry when you're speaking but speak the words speak the words amen Amen. How do we break and identify the barriers? Why are some people problems to pastors who are intercessors? They can be great problems because they're powerful people. And we have to understand <laughs> some of these things. We have to understand some of these things. They can be problems. And we have to learn how to relate to the rest of the work. We have to learn to... So many intercessors become very depressed people. They become very negative people. And they can't rejoice. They can't participate in service when there is great rejoicing. I remember pastoring a church where there was an intercessor. And oh, I thank God for her. She was so great. She was marvelous. As long as she was in gear and as long as she was making intercession but if it was a time when she wasn't making intercession she was a pain in the neck and if I didn't know what I'm teaching you I would have somehow got her out of the church because you couldn't handle her she would come into a service of rejoicing and sit there like a wet blanket because she couldn't relate to rejoicing but if she was in a time of intercession and prayer she was great I remember, and she also had great revelations the Lord revealed to her. She's very sensitive in the spirit, but oh my, she would give the young people such a hard time because the young people were so playful and, and, and they would try to talk to her and she thought they were so frivolous and she wouldn't even talk to them. You know, her attitude was, don't you know who I am? I am the intercessor. Well, you tell young people that and they'll torment you to death. But she was powerful in prayer. She was powerful in the spirit, but she couldn't relate to nothing else. And that is a problem. I remember one time when uh, someone asked me to go and visit a doctor whom they uh, was attending to, uh, going to as a patient. And uh, he invited me to his home. So I went. And uh, his wife was quite civil. And uh, she was... Uh, she invited me into her home and he took me into the living room and we sat down and we began talking. He was a surgeon and uh, I began talking to him about baptism in Jesus' name and he started saying, well, I see that, I can understand that. And then we started talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and he said, well, I can see that. They were members of the Lutheran church, uh, the Episcopal church. And, uh, and he started saying, well, I can see that. I can see that. And, and he hadn't said, I see that very many times about the Holy Ghost until this doctor surgeon's wife could see all of her society going right down the drain of a Pentecostal church. And she had all she could take. And she come walking into the room where we were at and ordered both of us out of her house <laughs> we went out in the driveway and this medical doctor a surgeon if you please was totally humiliated well I did my best to comfort him and say 
I don't take this personal. You know, I did everything I could, but I wasn't being very successful. He was so humiliated. And finally, about that time, the door opened, and here was this expensive little pet dog that must have been must have cost him five hundred dollars at least. And that dog got in her way, and she kicked that dog straight through the air and ordered that doctor back into the house. Well, because of my many gifts, I was able to discern it was about time for me to go. <laughs> and so I went. And I didn't drive very far until I thought I must call sister and get her to praying. He needs prayer. You can be sure that guy needs prayer right about now. And so I tried to call sister, and her phone was busy. And I called three times from this pay phone before I finally got the phone to ring. And when she finally answered, you know what she said to me? What's wrong, Brother Cole? I've been trying to call your house and your office. That's how sensitive she was. But when she would come to the house of the Lord, and she wasn't in such a dimension of prayer, she was a pain and a half. You know why? Because of pride. It's easy to get spiritual pride, and intercessors can become very arrogant and very proud and become a real genuine problem for a pastor that doesn't understand the things that I'm teaching right now. He wouldn't know what to do with them, so they just kind of press them aside, put them out of the way, but someone that will govern themselves, someone that will behave themselves, someone that will respect and submit themselves to leadership. One of the most important things I have learned in my ministry is the ministry to learn to laugh. And I laugh at the most unexpected times. You know why I do that? Because you praise God when I do that. You don't go away as saying, oh, how great is Brother Cole. You go away as saying, well, what does God use him for anyhow? <laughs> Amen. You look to God instead of looking to me. Laughter is a wonderful thing. And you have to learn how to relate to the rest of the work. Remember the things that I have taught you in 1 Corinthians about the Corinthian church being so powerful with all the gifts, but they also were the most carnal church. Not only were they the most powerful church in the New Testament, they was also the most carnal church. And the Apostle Paul said to them, I can't talk to you as spiritual because you are so carnal, yet they come behind in no gift whatsoever. Amen. We have got to learn to learn to associate with all the things of God. Amen.